Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rift Sphere channel. Today, we're going to configure SAP and ZBD, a powerful tool for downloading files from Usenet. We'll be following the trusted guidance of Trash Guides. Let's dive in. To begin, open the web interface of SAP and ZBD by going to the Docker tab in Unraid and clicking on the SAP and ZBD application. Once you're in the web interface, you'll come across a quick start wizard. Choose your preferred language and click on start wizard to proceed. Now, it's time to enter the necessary information provided by your Usenet provider. Make sure to enter the hostname, username, and password. Ensure that SSL is selected. If needed, you can modify the port in the advanced settings. Well, you have the option to test the server. We'll do more configuration later, so you can simply click next for now. Next, you'll notice that the default folders might not be correct. Click on the cog icon next to each folder, and you'll be taken to the configuration page. To begin the configuration, enable the advanced settings at the top. Then, click on browse for the temporary download folder and select the incomplete folder in the path you added during the setup. Repeat the same process for the complete and watched folders. Once done, click on Save Changes. Now, let's focus on the system folders. Set the admin, backup, and log folders to something logical. If you don't provide a full path, it will be based on the config folder in our app data. Additionally, create a .nzb backup folder next to your download folders. This folder will keep a copy of all your past downloads, ensuring that no duplicates are being downloaded. This folder can grow big, so I suggest to put it in the data share, and not our app data. After making these changes, Hit the Save Changes button again. Moving on to the General tab, we'll keep the web server part on default for this video. However, if you want to enable HTTPS, this is where you can make the necessary changes. Under the Security section, you have the option to set a username and password. This is a good opportunity to add SAP and ZBD, the URL, the username and password and the API key to flat notes. Since our apps need more writes than just adding NZBs, we won't be using the NZB key. Once again, hit the Save Changes button. This will restart SAB NZBD and prompt you to log in again. After logging back in, return to the settings using the cog icon on the top and go back to the general tab. In the tuning section, you can set your maximum line speed and the percentage you want to utilize. Similar to Qubit Torrent, avoid setting it too high, like 80%, so that you can still surf the web comfortably. Hit the save button once you've made the necessary changes. Now. Let's move on to the Servers tab. Here, you'll see the server we previously configured. Click on Show Details to access more options. Well, the host, port, SSL, username, and password should already be set. You can modify them if needed. The number of connections is something you'll have to tweak based on your provider's limits. Typically, Providers have different connection limits ranging from 12 to 200. It's important not to exceed these limits. As a starting point, I recommend setting it to 8 and gradually increasing the number until your download speed stabilizes. The priority setting comes into play when you have multiple servers. Many users opt for an unlimited server with a priority set to 0. Since no server is perfect, 
they also add a backup server with a higher priority number, giving it lower priority and only being used if higher priority servers can't fulfill the request. The retention time is provided by your server and indicates how long they store data. For an unlimited server, I suggest checking the required option. This prevents you from consuming your block servers if the unlimited server goes offline. The optional checkbox can be used for unreliable servers, but it's advisable not to rely on them as your primary server. Although you have the option to set the account expiration date, since we'll be automating things, it's unlikely that we'll see the message. Once you've made the necessary adjustments, hit the test server button to ensure everything is working fine. Save changes if everything checks out. If you have multiple servers, you can add them using the Add Server button. Now, let's move on to the Switches tab. While the server settings should be fine by default, you can make additional tweaks if you experience poor speed or an unstable connection. Ensure that abort jobs that cannot be completed is checked. If we can't complete a download, it's best to mark it as failed so that our other tools can look for alternative solutions. Change the setting for Detect Duplicate Downloads to Fail Job. This prevents us from downloading something we already have, and it informs our tools that it's not a good release. Leave the Duplicate Episodes option set to Off to avoid marking upgraded quality files as duplicates. As a result, the Proper Releases option won't be applicable in this case. Set Action when Encrypted RAR is downloaded to Abort. Since we're automating the process, we don't want downloads to get stuck in our queue, waiting for us to find a password. Failing the download allows our tools to search for an alternative release. Unwanted extensions can be left empty. Our automation tools will only move the essential files and clean up after themselves, while you might still want to download certain things manually. For queue sorting, Select sort by age, with the news files appearing first. This increases the chances of completing the download before it gets deleted from the server. If your server can handle it, I recommend enabling direct unpack. However, if your server becomes slow during downloads, you can turn it off. Hit the save button to save your changes. If you're still experiencing issues with your server while downloading, you can enable the option to pause downloading during post-processing. Enable post-process only verified jobs. This ensures that only completed downloads are marked as completed. Enable recursive unpacking to ensure that we always get our files and not another archive. Check the box for ignore any folders inside archives. This setting ensures that all files are extracted to the same directory, without creating subfolders. This is important because our automation tools don't check subfolders and might miss subtitles. You can also check the option for on failure try alternative NZB. While not all servers provide this feature, it's useful when available and doesn't hurt to enable it. Ignore samples and cleanup lists might sound tempting, but since our automation tools handle the cleanup, it's best to leave these options disabled to avoid interfering with manual downloads. Enable the option to deobfuscate final file names. This will help ensure that our file names are clear and readable. Hit the Save button to save your changes. Moving on to the Sorting tab. You don't need to configure any sorting rules. Simply remove any existing sorters. Finally, Let's navigate to the Categories tab and remove all the predefined categories, since we'll be adding our own as we progress. There are many other tweaks you can explore, such as quota, scheduling, and notifications, so feel free to explore those options. But for now, this concludes our configuration for SAB NZBD. Don't forget to add SAB NZBD to Heimdall. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.